Okay. Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear exhibitors, visitors, participants, and invited guests of the, tra the 14th Travel Turkey Esmir Digital Fair. It's an honor and privilege for us to participate in this important fair, which is aimed to uh, get in contact different tour operators, different countries, different peoples together. So today we will be presenting you Ethiopia, which is the which is located at the Horn of Africa, which is basically designated as the land of origins. We will be presenting you this beautiful and uh, rich in history. Uh, so we're happy to take part in this program. And my colleague, uh, Walda Gabriel, will be presenting uh, what Ethiopia is and why Ethiopia needs to be visited. Uh, so I will give the floor to Mr. Walda Gabriel. Okay, thank you, Salam. So uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody, all the participants of uh, this um, Izmir uh, Digital uh, Trade Fair. And as my colleague Salam has said, uh, Ethiopia is branded as land of origins. And when we say land of origins, we are the origin of humankind. I mean, in the world, there are around 17 discoveries that show the evolution process of human being. And out of the 17 findings, 13 of them are, are found in Ethiopia. So when we say Ethiopia land of origin, we are the cradle of humankind. And when we invite all tourists from all over the world, actually we are inviting them to, to their origin. The second one is we are the origin of coffee. I think coffee is the, the most consumed product on daily basis. And in 2019 only 2.26 billion cups of coffee are consumed per day. So this is uh, this product, the most consumed product originates in Ethiopia, and this is uh, Ethiopia's gift to, to the rest of the world. Oh. So for, uh, to manage my time, I will only show you the highlights or the bird's precise view of what Ethiopia can offer uh, for, for um, tourists. Very PowerPoint Oh. Is that? Share our Okay. What about now? Still desktop, no? Okay. Share. Yeah, now it can. So uh, we are the land of origins, and this is just to give you the highlights of what Ethiopia can offer for potential uh, tourists. And when we promote Ethiopia as a tourist destination, basically we do have uh, five major tourist routes where tourists can find uh, an amalgam or a menu of uh, outstanding uh, tourist attractions that are natural, cultural, historical, and uh, business and conference uh, facilities. So those uh, five routes are the historic north and the Samian mountains, the Rift Valley and the cultural mosaic of the south, the east, the Knuckle, Harder, and the Valley mountains, the west, lush nature and coffee routes, and Addis Ababa and surroundings. So for all those um, travel trade representatives who are participating in this trade fair, those are the major routes that we can package together and promote Ethiopia as a tourist destination. So as you see in my screen, this um, uh, 
the northern, the historical north in Summit Mountains is basically highlighted in blue, and it includes all the UNESCO registered uh, world uh, heritage sites, such as Aksum, an ancient civilization that dates back uh, from the 10th century BC up to 8th century AD. And there are um, um, obelisks, uh, uh, palaces, cemeteries, and uh, ancient coins. Uh, as well as archaeological sites that are worthy to be visited. We have uh, Nagashi. Uh, we Ethiopians claim the first Hijra was from Mecca to Ethiopia. It was not from Mecca to Medina because uh, the close families of the Prophet, they were uh, coming to Ethiopia in 1614, while the second Hijra from Mecca to Medina was in uh, 622. So this means we claim ourselves we are the the first hijra was from mecca to to ethiopia and uh, this is the first um, muslim settlement in the world as well as the first mosque in the land of uh, in the in the the african continent uh, we do have uh, gondar a medieval uh, civilization that was the capital of ethiopia from uh, the 17th century up to the 9th century and uh, we do, we um, brand gondar as camelate of africa where there are uh, different palaces that show the civilization and the legacy of the medieval period uh, we do have lalivela the replica of uh, the uh, Holy Land or Jerusalem. We call it the African uh, Jerusalem. And there are um, 11 rocky own churches, heaven out of single rock. And it also depicts what Jerusalem or the Holy Land looks like. And uh, it was started in the 11th century and they are providing the same service still now. And most of the time people say it is one of the eight wonders of the world. It's basically Aksum, Al Najashi, uh, Gondar, and Lalibala. You know, it's very tough to describe and explain in words unless you come and visit uh, them. So we do have uh, the Lake Tana, uh, which is the source of the Blue Nile. And as we know, the Blue Nile is the longest river in Africa, as well as, you know, we are the origin of Blue Nile, and Blue Nile nurtures the African civilization. All the civilization in Ethiopia. Uh, Sudan and Egypt, all the ancient civilization were based in this Nile basin and it's one of the UNESCO uh, biosphere reserves and it has uh, 37 uh, islands and more than 20 uh, monasteries that dates back from 13th to 19th century. We do have the amazing uh, national park also registered by UNESCO, Samian Mountains National Park. It's uh, basically uh, we one of the world's most spectacular landscape, and it is also regarded as the roof of Africa. And when you go there, there is an amazing landscape and rich fauna and flora, including the endemic mammals and birds. So we have those uh, kind of uh, wildlife like the Chalada Babon and Wale Ibex are uh, one among, among those uh, endemic mammals that can be found in this uh, uh, national park. We do have the Gara Alta. There are more than 100 rocky own churches that place uh, the northern part of Ethiopia or the Tigray region. And uh, they are less known, but they are an appropriate place for uh, biblical tours or for those who appreciate both nature and uh, religion. Uh, so the second one is the Rift Valley and the mosaic culture of the South. As you can see, this is uh, highlighted in, um, in the Southern part of uh, the map and you can see all the, from Addis, all South. Uh, south. So South Omo is Ethiopia's most culturally and linguistically diverse administration zone. It's in a given zone, there are 16 different ethnic groups with their own language, lifestyle, costume, food, and other. And you can, you can imagine in one zone, you will get 16 different people that they live their indigenous uh, life. Uh, also, it's known for its archaeological site, and it's also one of the UNESCO World Heritage uh, Sites. Uh, we do have the Ponso Cultural Landscape. This is also one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. This is an ancient fortified village of the Ponso Cultural Landscape. 
a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's named after its consul, the ethnic group that inhabit this there. Uh, and they have you know, an amazing uh, water and soil um, conservation. Uh, we do have the Central Rift Valley, known for beautiful lakes, and it's also known for um, bird watchers. It's basically bird watching's paradise. So if you can, uh, if but by the way, the Great Rift Valley is one of the only geological features that can be seen from the moon. And it's very um, rich in fauna and flora, mainly in uh, for, for bird watchers. Uh, we do have the Natasar National Park where we can find the zebra and we do have uh, so many beautiful lakes that we can see the crocodile and it's also a place where uh, bird watchers can enjoy their visit. Uh, the third route is the east, which includes the Danakil, the Harar, uh, and uh, Bale Mountains. And you can see from the northeast part of uh, Ethiopia till the northern south, south east part of uh, the country. And it's uh, known for its history, amazing landscape, and fauna and flora too. So we do have the Danakil Depression, standard with the active volcanoes and uh, explosive uh, uh, geysers, the Danakil, which drops to 116 meters be below sea level. So when we say, when we talk about the Semen Mountains, we do have uh, so many mountains, more than 4,000 meters above sea level. And we have also one of the, the lowest places on Earth with uh, around 50 degrees Celsius, um, and the biggest uh, highlight of the Danakil is the Arta Ale volcano, as you can see from the image. It's um, actually the active volcano, uh, and this world is all this permanent lava lake are there. So for those who are adventure lovers, we will we can provide um, you know the volcano expedition or volcano climbing uh, packages. We do have the Bali Mountains National Park. Bali Mountain National Park is a spectacular hiking destination. And it, it is Ethiopia's most important biodiversity hotspot. And this is known for its endemism. And only in this park, there are uh, more than 1,300 plant species uh, that are already identified. And there are 160 Ethiopian endemics and 23 that are unique to that park. So this is very known for its rich fauna and flora, as well as for its uh, endemic mammals, birds, and endemic plant species too. So we have Harar. The atmospheric world uh, of Harar, Jagol, is the world's forest, fourth holiest, uh, holiest Islamic settlement next to Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem. And Harar was found before the seventh century, reaching its climax during the sixth century. And we can imagine from seventh century up to 16th century, there are so many heritage artifacts and legacies that can be uh, visited. And um, what makes the world city of Harar unique is in 48 hectares, there are more than 82 mosques and over 400 shrines. So you can imagine the size of the city and the number of holy places there, both shrines and, and the uh, mosques. We do have the Sof Omar Caves. It's one of the most spectacular and extensive underground caves in the world and it's running for nearly 15 kilometers. So you can you can imagine 15 kilometers of cave and uh, a natural wonder. And for those who organize uh, specialized packages like caving, this is an appropriate place. And it's also an important pilgrimage site named after a very known Sheikh who took refuge there in the 12th century. So it's both um, holy place as well as a natural uh, wonder. We do have the Babile Elephant Sanctuary in the eastern part of Ethiopia. Babile is home to Africa's most northeasterly population of elephants as well as other important wildlife species. So when we talk when we talk about wildlife, we have the big five. We have endemic mammals and birds. We have also, um, you know, the common uh, African um, wildlife. Uh, another is the uh, Danakil or the uh, northeastern part of uh, Ethiopia or the Afar region. Uh, it's very known for its uh, being the cradle of humankind. And um, as I have uh, said in my introduction, there are uh, 
17 discoveries in the world that show the evolution of human process and uh, the evolution process of human being. And uh, certain of them are found in Ethiopia, in this uh, northeastern part of Ethiopia, including the popular Lucy, Salam, Ardi, and others. So we have the western part of Ethiopia, which is known for its lush nature and uh, coffee route. In my in introduction, I have said coffee is uh, uh, Ethiopia's gift to the rest of the world. And uh, we have the Kaffa Biosphere Reserve in the west, and the Kaffa Biosphere Reserve is the birthplace of Arabica coffee. Even that's why the name coffee, coffee in different languages is originated from this specific uh, place. And we can, there you can see uh, wild coffee, and there are some 5,000 coffee varieties in uh, Kaffa, which represent an enormous uh, diversity and invaluable biological treasure for mankind. And Kaffa's evergreen forests are also Ethiopia's green land. So we can imagine in the West that it's the uh, forest and uh, the coffee there is most of the coffee there is uh, organic. And when, when I talk about coffee for all the participants, uh, when you have a cup of coffee, please remember Ethiopia because this amazing product is Ethiopia's gift to the rest of the world. So we have the Gambilla National Park in the western part of Ethiopia. Ethiopia's largest national park is the site of the Africa's second largest antelope migration. There is always an antelope migration from the Gambilla to southern Sudan. So people can see, you know, so many uh, antelope migrations there. And uh, the park is also a stronghold for the endangered Nubian giraffe. As you can see uh, in, the, in the screen, we do have the giraffe there in the, in the uh, western part of uh, Ethiopia. We have Winter Crater Lake, which is very close to Addis. And uh, an exotic uh, volcano mount, Wenchi encloses a large and beautiful crater lake. And the island monastery of Wenchi is also um, the, there there is uh, one uh, uh, 13th century old uh, monastery and this is one of the places where our prime minister took the initiative to develop to a new uh, world standard uh, tourist destination. So the fifth route is Addis and it's uh, surrounding and uh, the world's third highest capital and the diplomatic capital of Africa. As we know, uh, Addis Ababa, uh, the headquarter of African Union, the headquarter of United Nations Economic Commission for Africa and other international uh, diplomatic center. So for those who are looking for destinations to host events, organize conferences, meetings and others, Addis Ababa is an ideal place. So we have the recent developments of the unity part that showed all the, you know, the Ethiopian uh, civilization that goes back uh, to ancient time till uh, the current one. And there are all the political uh, legacies there. Where, so it's open for visitors. And uh, we have also the Intoto um, Park. Those parks are basically developed by the prime minister and they are uh, now ready uh, to attract tourists from different parts of uh, the world. We do have uh, Taya, one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, which is not also far uh, from Addis. And basically, those routes are the major, the major highlights that show what Ethiopia can offer for, for uh, tourists. And we do have you know, this uh, outdoor experience. We do have the rock climbing, the volcano ex expedition, the desert expedition, um, uh, biking, ballooning, uh, paragliding, and others. But we do have the athletics, which is uh, Ethiopia's uh, national sport. And uh, running is Ethiopian uh, national sport, enjoying. Uh, I mean, you can have the chance to train with the world champions there uh, due to the suitable uh, and comfortable weather throughout the year. Uh, it's an ideal place for people who want to join uh, the Great Run or who want you to, to train in, in Ethiopia. And this is uh, a recently taken photo. This is uh, the management of tourism Ethiopia, including me. And uh, the people with us are basically the uh, Marathon National Team of Turkey. And for the last three months they are in Ethiopia, uh, preparing for their uh, for the upcoming Tokyo Olympic, so you can imagine athletes can come and uh, you know train with Ethiopians. We do have uh, 
good training facilities too. And uh, this is also um, a new segment that uh, my government is uh, looking to attract uh, uh, sport tourism, specifically uh, athletics. So when we summarize it, uh, Ethiopia uh, is a country of rich history, a history as old as time itself. And we do have mosaic of culture, both tangible and intangible. By the way, we do have very colorful festivals, uh, religious as well as uh, public festivals. And uh, in Ethiopia, there are more than 80 different ethnic groups with their own language, their own costumes, their own lifestyle, their own uh, cuisine and everything. We do have spectacular landscape that includes the lush forest, um, uh, semi-desert, uh, and um, uh, one of the lowest places and more than uh, 4,000 meters above sea level too. We do have rich fauna and flora, both the plant species, as well as uh, mammals and uh, birds. Uh, we, are out, uh, we do have outdoor experience, as I have said. We do have the uh, trekking, hiking, sport tourism, uh, camping, caving, rock climbing, volcano expedition, and others, including sport tourism. Uh, now also we have um, established convention, convention bureau that really focuses on attracting the meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions to Ethiopia. And we do have very hospitable people that they can welcome every tourist and uh, generous enough to share what they have. So this is also uh, one of the um, I mean, very unique values uh, to Ethiopia. And also we do have uh, very colorful uh, festivals. And for those who are looking for investment, I know there are so many Turkish investments in the manufacturing sector, but still we are looking investors in the areas of tourism and hospitality. That includes the hotels, lodges, resorts, tour operation in joint venture with Ethiopian resort city. As I have said, we do have so many lakes, mainly in the Rift Valley. So you can think of uh, investing in resource city, lodges and resorts, mobile camping, ecology camps, helicopter tour, and activity based uh, investments like ballooning, boat transportation, and um, and uh, cable car too. So this is basically the highlight of Ethiopia. But if you want to know more about Ethiopia, I think um, our consulate there will provide you all the contacts, both from the private and from the government. And what can I assure you is my government and my office, whether you come as a tourist or as an investor, we will go an extra mile to make sure your experience is seamless experience. Thank you very much. Video to share Uh, what about now? No. Taya? Okay. Yeah. What about now, Salam? Aoni Tayal? Dims 
screen share argo gabri share screen iyalu no i know sun yaroku no i don't know lam indama imata ሰለክት ካረከ በኋላ ሼር ሚራ ኦፕሽን አልመጣም ኬስ ከዛኔ ክሎዚንግ ሪማርክ ላርግና ያ ለዛ ይሽና ለዛ ቪዲዮ ነው አሁን ከፈታ አንዱን ጨምረው ስንት ካላሉ ይታያል ሰላም አይ ይታያል አይ አይታየም አይታየም አሁን ይታያል ኦኬ
ነው ማለት ይችላል okay um thank you everybody and uh, as you have seen in uh, the last uh, video uh, ethiopia has has got the safe travel stamp from the world travel and tourism council based in london which means ethiopia is open and safe for tourists and uh, we are uh, see you in ethiopia Okay so I I am sure that you have got a little bit of uh, Ethiopia so we are calling you to discover more about the enormous gifts the historical natural and cultural sites of Ethiopia we are calling you to visit Ethiopia the land of origins which is the home of every everybody which is living in every part of the world Ethiopia is the second home for everyone because our ancestors were there they worked upright for the first time in our country so that's why we are saying it is the cradle of humanity so we are calling you to discover ethiopia anybody interested to visit our country you can contact us here in the ethiopian consulate general office in istanbul and also every uh, anybody any tourist operator if you have uh, a plan or a wish to get in contact with our tour operators you can also contact the Ethiopian Tour Operators Association uh, we are here to serve you to help you so uh, visit ethiopia the land of origins will be our message bye bye okay bye bye thank you i thank you